What is up, nerd friends? Welcome back to the Nerd Bench. New combo day. So let's get right into this. What is this new combo? Well, if you go to hobbywingdirect.com, we have a new combo that includes an XR10 Legacy and either a 3660 or 3652 sized motor. And I think they're all together, there's six different combos uh, from the low KV, the medium KV, and the what I call high KV, the 4300 stuff. And it also includes the bonus value of the power capacitor module letter E. And what this does is it helps with performance of the XR10 Legacy to deal with the bigger loads and heavier weight vehicles, bigger plugs, all that fun stuff. So we're going to pop this guy open. We're going to do the power cap install and show you how it all comes. Now, I did open this to get in here earlier, check some stuff out. And while I was in there, I broke the box. So my bad. Uh, comes with the sensor wire in the motor, and it includes a random pinion gear. Sometimes you're going to get a 48 pitch. Sometimes you're going to get a 32 pitch. Sometimes you're going to get a mod one. Um, there's no fixed whatever you know pinion gear you're going to get. And, of course, your best friend in the whole wide world. The instruction manual now one thing that i do like to do before i do a fresh install is i add a little bit of oil to the front bearing but i like to add a little bearing oil and usually it's just like one little drop on there and then give it a rotation to to get it moving and then you let the motor sit so the oil gets in there and it's just kind of like your hundred thousand mile tune-up ahead of time and then if i'm going to run my truck in a lot of like dusty dirty conditions you can take a little bit of grease and lay that right along the edge to act as a barrier to keep the dirt getting out and as you see the dirt build up on the grease you'll know that it's time to do your hundred thousand mile tune-up that is a 3660 size motor and what those numbers stand for are the diameter and the length this particular one is a 4300 kv so it's 36 millimeter diameter 60 millimeter length i have a 3652 here as well to give you an idea what the size is and basically 3652 is 52 millimeter length which is more like a 540 motor and the 60 millimeter length is more of a uh 550 size motor. So get into the speed control and um, the XR10 Pro Legacy was the generation of the XR10 that came out after the V3.1. We continue to produce the XR10 as the Legacy speed control or what was called the V4 in its original days and it's just a, a wonderful platform that works very very well and is kind of the precursor to what the G2s and the G2Ss became. So you open this guy up get that out of there and then inside of the cardboard sleeve there is some more good stuff this is for uh the programming device if you're going to use the, the tuner the lcd box uh you get a spare fan as well and that's all the good stuff that comes in there and then in the bottom of the box your best friend in the whole wide world your instruction manual and then some you got decals some shrink tubing some double side tape for mounting purposes and did i say zip ties already probably and the speed control does come with the 12 gauge wire pre-installed and the power cap, the standard power cap included. We're going to remove this one and install the heavy duty power cap here. So there's a look at your XR10 Pro Legacy. It comes with a fan pre-installed, the programming port on the front for doing your tuning. This will work with either the OTA Bluetooth device or the LCD programming box. It does not work with the LED programming box. You will need a programming box to do any tuning or adjusting of the speed control to change it off of the default settings you do not need the programming box just to do the install and get it running that is only necessary for doing programming changes and stuff like that. so when i do some soldering i like to have a wood block around for solder splashes or at least a junky towel not my fancy workman as you can see i've got many solder splashes on my fancy workman so Try to remember to have a wood block or a small vise of some sort to hold the device while you're working on it. I've gotten pretty good at kind of pinching it down and hold it in a position to get stuff done. And if you can't get leaded solder because it's getting harder and harder to come by, you do want to have a little bit of flux around to help remove the solder. The lead-free solder that gets used on international items is really hard to work with because it's a very high temperature. So you have to have a pretty hot iron and a little bit of flux goes a very long way into making your life a lot easier. I use a soldering station. This particular one is from the golden days of my career back when I worked at Novak. It's a Haku 928 station, and it has that good old-fashioned huge, let me see, it has the good old-fashioned 
giant blade. This is heating up right now. And what I usually try to do is as soon as it starts to get hot, you always want to have some solder on the tip of your iron so that it doesn't kill itself. And you see all that smoke? You definitely do not want to be working in a closed room, have the windows open, well-ventilated area. All the smoke that comes off the solder is very, very bad. You should have some eye protection on because as you solder, it will burst and splatter and do some fun stuff like that. If you haven't you know, if this is the first soldering video that you've ever seen, uh, pro tip is to watch some more. You'll learn more from more soldering tips. It's hard to include everything all in one video, so a lot of times it takes a few. So what I do is I hit that with a little bit of solder, and then I try to lay this flat onto the small wire, and it is not going to want to move right away, so you need a little pressure, and you roll it out of there. Now, this is a pretty hot iron. I have this thing cranked up to about 850 degrees Fahrenheit right now, which is very hot. And I'm also using quite a bit of solder in there to make it, uh, I guess you'd say, flow transfer heat a little bit better. Now, I know, I, I can hear you typing already. Solder. It's spelled with an L. Agreed, but aluminum isn't spelled aluminum, so take that. So that gets the old power capacitor off. For these combos, because they have they include the uh, four pole motors, it's wise to run the bigger power capacitor. I was just reflowing the solder a little bit right there. I didn't like how it was hanging off. So the, we include with these combos this larger power cap, and just like the note on the website says, it is highly recommended that you install them. So what I usually try to do with these is. Wherever the speed control is going to sit, I like to have the power cap either kind of sitting next to it like that or like that. Or sometimes you're not sure what your install is going to be. So I leave these kind of long, but I like to shorten them up at least just a little bit in a lot of applications. For this one, just for the sake of the video, I'm going to leave it long because we have been running these setups in our short course trucks. And I seem to be having to move the power caps around quite a bit. So I always like to tin the solder or the things that I'm going to solder first with some fresh solder just to help with the flow kind of infest that lead free solder with this good old fashioned leaded solder and you know keep things going. And you got to be very careful of the polarity. This guy is positive and negative, so positive wires over here. You put that on top and then with the clean iron apply a little bit of pressure so it sinks through the solder and gets onto the wire. And that's all there is to that. Pretty, pretty straightforward. And then do the same thing on the negative side. And then a little bit of pressure downward, not too much, because you want the, the power cap wire to push kind of through the solder and get onto the wire. Generally speaking, solder is not a great conductor, so you want your wire touching other wire or touching the, the surface of the contact. And then I <clears throat> like to twist my wires to keep them a little neat and tidy from getting caught on stuff. And then when I get this all installed, uh, it'll sit in the vehicle. I think the way we've been having them is like this, this is the rear wires come over the back. So this guy should be able to sit nice and protected up in front of the speed control and all these vehicle. We're putting these, like I said, mostly in the low C short course trucks. The Peacock pit is back and we've been getting a ton of laps over there. So I don't quite need full length. And I usually remove about a half a thumb of wire off of there. I've been, we got a whole bunch of new nerds up in the mix now. So there has been a lot of soldering going on at the Peacock pit. Now, as I have talked about in many other videos, I think that it's very important to, to use some proper wire strippers when you do your motor wires or any wires for that matter, so that you don't get the, uh, sh the edge strands cut. And it's so that when you go to solder these onto the motor tabs, they don't fully out or do anything funky. Always try to twist these nice and tight. And part of that is to try to keep the solder from getting down into the center of the wire. Like I said, solder is not a great conductor, so sometimes less is more. So I lay these so that the wires are flat to help stop the solder from wicking into the wire. If you do them with their pointed up in the air, gravity will just help the solder get down in there. So this way we get as little solder into the, the core or down the wire as we can. And it just makes the wires last a little, little bit longer. It keeps them more flexible and keeps the wire doing its job. And I come back and I hit them all again. And when you tin wires, you don't want it like blobbed on there. You want it to kind of flow. Let me see if that helps. And get it so that you can kind of see the strands and still have a little bit of extra solder on there. And then 
when I get it onto the motor, I, I tin these very lightly as well. Sometimes like this isn't ideal. So I'm gonna do that number, put it in the wrench and that way it doesn't roll around, or the pliers rather. These have the color codes and the letters on here, and it does have to be wired correctly, ABC. Of course, I've found that sometimes people don't know that that actually matters. So I like to mention it every once in a while. So since these are pretty freshly tinned, for the most part, a little bit of heat, a little bit of downward pressure is all it takes, and you get a nice clean, so <laughs> you get a nice clean solder joint that is so hot it flies off in your hand. Because it's freshly tinned, most of the time, you just have to hit it with a little bit of heat, hold it in place, watch that surface change color, give it a little wiggle, make sure it's good, double check that you've got your yellow or the B lead, and do the same thing again, let the solder flow, apply some downward pressure, and you get right in there. And last one. All right, so I made them about the same length and the sensor wire is going to be just a little bit longer. I always like to put the sensor wire in the speed control before I install it in the vehicle because it's kind of down here in a hard to reach spot. This way you can run along the edge and make sure that all of these are nice and even and press down into the sensor harness or the sensor plug, I guess you'd say. This guy's gonna come up around and then kind of the same thing there. You want to make ooh. you want to make sure these are keyed so it doesn't just go in one way or the other there's a little edge on there it goes towards i guess that way and again i just like to go along the edge and make sure that i get all these little the pin guys or the i guess the plug tube part down on the pins before i do the final install and then the only thing we have left to do is a battery plug and i save this till the end because sometimes people are running different plugs so we do that when we get there to do the install um i always say run at least xt90s or bigger if you're a go fast runner the traxxas plugs deep dean's plugs and stuff like that just kind of aren't big enough for today's big power setups or high power lipos or even what the amount of traction that you get out of a lot of these vehicles well there you have it folks it's the quick and easy on the basic install setup or or a wiring i guess you'd say once you get ready for the install you're going to put that into the vehicle and you need to calibrate the speed control to the radio system so that the speed control can learn the neutral the full throttle and the full brake output so link in the description for a video that'll walk you through the calibration process. This is just to get you started before you do kind of the, your, your real install, so to speak. If you do have any direct questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to shoot us an email, northamerica at hobbywing.com. Don't forget we do a podcast each and every month. We do two podcasts, the first and third Friday of the month. Look it up on your favorite podcast service. It is called RC Stuff Powered by Hobbywing. Each and every episode, we do a giveaway for a free Hobbywing combo. So make sure you give it a listen and find out how to get signed up. And as always, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Another episode of The Charlie Show, new every Tuesday, right here on the Hobbywing official YouTube channel. We'll see you all next time. Thanks a lot.